Hello and welcome to the fourth section of this course, Structuring Ansible Playbox. In this section, we're going to take a look at using includes and imports, the various ways in which this can be done, best practices and the differences that arise from static and dynamic behavior, using tags so that we can take advantage of playbook reuse through the execution of specific tasks, using roles, the structure of a role, how we can easily create roles through the use of Ansible Galaxy, and the transition of our existing Nginx web application project to a role. Join me in the first video of this section, using includes and imports. In this video, we're going to take a look at using includes and imports. We'll look at include tasks, include playbooks. We'll look at the newer approaches of include underscore tasks, import underscore playbook, and import underscore tasks. We'll look at the differences between static and dynamic includes and imports, and the recommendations for choosing an approach. The Ansible engine provides an include directive that we can use for bundling tasks and even playbooks into separate files. You might have a good reason to do this. Say, for example, you're installing a variety of packages as prerequisites for playbook. These could go into a separate file that you include in your main playbook. We're in section four, structure in Ansible playbooks and video one using include and import and revision one. Okay, so what we have here is a playbook. We have a look at include underscore playbook. Quite a simple playbook. What we're doing here is using the debug module and we're specifying that we are executing task one and then here, we have the include directive and we're including another set of tasks. If we have a look at the file in question, quite simply a YAML document with the same task as what we have above. So here where we're using the debug module, it's the same task, but this time we're specifying play one and task two. If we execute the playbook, so this we're running against all of our hosts. Now we're gonna get some deprecation warnings here. We're just gonna ignore those for the time being because we'll be covering these off later on in this video. And you can see here, so we've included that task from a separate file. So we have task one here and task two here. Okay, excellent, clear that. If we look at our include playbook here, what we're doing is including an entire playbook. So you can see here, we have the original task that we're including, but now we also, at that base level, have an include on a playbook. And if we review this playbook, quite simply, it's mimicking what we had, but again, using different debug messages. So we're specifying here that this is play two, task one, and within this, Again, we're actually showing that from a playbook that has been imported, we can actually import further tasks. So here's play two, task one, and we are importing this file, play two, task two. So if we just look at that, and again, it's gonna be following the same format. Here we have the YAML document, and within that, we have play two, task two, being used with the debug module. So now if we run that, here we've got play one task one play one task two and again we have another play now play two task one and play two task two okay so to address the deprecation warnings we're going to change all reference where we use include on tasks to include underscore tasks we're also going to change the include of the playbook to import underscore playbook. And whilst we're at it, we're also gonna add an import underscore tasks. We'll make this into a playbook that runs on a single host as well. So if we have a look now at the include import playbook, we've got this here just as CentOS one. We have our default play one task one here. We're using the include tasks and we're including play one underscore task two. We 
our importing tasks here. So play one task free and we're importing the playbook. So play two dot yaml. Let me exit out to that. And I'll just cut that in here and show the others. So that one's quite simple. That follows the same structure. We have the separate playbook here. Again, targeting the same host, CentOS 1. And here that's bringing in its own include underscore tasks. Okay, let's run this. Okay, so let's go back. We've got a little bit more in the way of information this time but we can see here that it's done play one task one play one task two play one task three then we've gone into the new play play two task one play two task two and within this as well we had some information so where we've used the include underscore tasks we've got an entry there in blue that tells us that something has actually happened here so informational and again when we actually did that from the playbook that we were bringing in as well we've got the same so all of this is working as expected and apart from the informational part there doesn't seem to be much in the difference between the use of include underscore tasks import underscore tasks and import underscore playbook. There is, however, underlying differences which are worth being aware of. Ansible has different modes of operation when using import and include, known as static and dynamic. All imports are static and are processed during playbook passing. Includes, which as we saw by the message, now deprecated on the other hand, may be static or dynamic, and this may vary depending on the version of Ansible. The newer include underscore options are dynamic. Personally, I feel that these are better illustrated through example. So let's take a look at each of these. Okay, so what we've actually got here within our playbook, this one has been made informational with additional comments to show you exactly which ones are dynamic, which ones are static, what the state of deprecation is as well. Okay, so if we look at this playbook, what we actually have here is a lot of contextual information that has been added to this to try and make the process of understanding the differences between these options and specifically when things are static or dynamic and what that actually means to the execution of the playbook. So here we can see where we are using include tasks. Include tasks is dynamic. Include, which is what we are getting all of the deprecation warnings about, is static by default unless you override it. So you can actually see here, we've got the parameter to override it, but at the moment it is hashed out. Import tasks is also static as well. For each of these tasks, we have a when condition, and that when condition relates to a variable whose name also relates to what we are actually doing. So where we are using include tasks, we're looking for a variable of include tasks var. Where we are using include, we're looking for a variable of include underscore var and correspondingly with import underscore tasks, we're looking for import tasks underscore var. That condition, so we're saying when that variable is not defined within this playbook, we're, we're never actually setting those conditions. So when it enters the task, it will meet the criteria for execution by default. So in all three of these examples, they should start to execute. For the include tasks at the top, we have this file. And if you look at the other ones, we have something similar. So include tasks is including include underscore tasks dot yaml include is including include dot yaml and import tasks is using import tasks dot yaml all three of these files follow the same kind of structure and if we look at one of them what they are doing is executing three tasks the first task is setting a fact. It's going to try and set the fact, the variable for the when condition. So if you recall, you can see up above, we have 
when import underscore tasks underscore var is not defined and again when include underscore tasks underscore var is not defined in all three of these examples when it executes that first task of the include import include underscore task wherever it is it's going to negate that when condition that when condition will no longer be viable so what we're going to see here and this is really the the crux of static and dynamic is how it actually affects the loop of what it's going to do with its subsequent tasks will it end up executing the second and third task for the various approaches that we're doing so let's have a look this one has been quite a difficult one to explain and it is a difficult topic but hopefully here the execution of the playbook will make this clearer. So on that note let's clear as well and include underscore import playbook. We've got the deprecation warnings which we know about. Okay so first one which was up was the include underscore tasks. Now if you recall this one was dynamic. And what's actually happened to you, it's gone in and it's set the fact, which should negate the condition. But we can see that the second task and the third task has executed. If we look at the include, so to recap on that, the include, which is deprecated, is static by default. And here it set the fact and then that fact, because it was negated there, that fact then applied to the second and third task. If we look at import tasks, which is also static, we can see that the same thing happened there. The first task executed, and then that negated the second and the third. To summarize what we saw there, the include underscore tasks is dynamic. Include is static by default, but can be made dynamic. Import underscore tasks is static. Dynamic directives are applied at execution, i.e. the when directive applies in the same way to every task at the point of the inclusion. Changes to variables do not affect the inclusion state. When static, directives are applied at execution, i.e. when directive is action sequentially for each task. A task can influence the inclusion state. If we change the current playbook and we change the static here, so we override that and we say static false, so technically we will be making this dynamic. And now if we rerun the playbook for the include task, you can see now that we've changed the state of this and we have made this dynamic. And if we just go back to the slide, we can confirm that. We saw that it was green for all of the tasks. It's running in a dynamic state. So the directives applied at execution, apply in the same way to every task. Changes to variables do not affect the inclusion state. If we go into revision five, we can have a look at the equivalent for playbooks. And in both of these cases, so we have the option of include, to include a playbook and to import a playbook as well. And import underscore playbook is the recommendation. Include is now deprecated. In both of these cases, they are both static. So let's have a look at the equivalent files. We're doing the same thing in a different way that we were doing in the previous revision, whereas we are negating the fact that we are actually checking again. So here we're checking that include underscore playbook var is not defined. Here we're checking that import playbook underscore var is not defined. And within each of these, we are negating the fact. So if we run against this one, and just like we saw with the tasks, the because these are static, it has actually skipped the second. So it has taken that set fact which is included in the playbook. 
To summarize, as you can see, the include is somewhat confusing with the variation in static dynamic behavior. And it was for this reason that the Ansible best practice is to use include underscore tasks, import underscore tasks, and import underscore playbook, as opposed to making use of include, which as you can see there is now deprecated. If you stick to this approach, it's quite simple. Include underscore star is dynamic. Import underscore star is static. Personally, I recommend that you use include underscore star when there are tasks that need to make decisions based on dynamic gathered facts and import underscore star when dealing with what could be deemed static components for example, tasks that are separated into subtask files. One other thing to consider just before we close off this section, with includes, you can use loops. With imports, you cannot. So let's take a look at an example of using includes with loops. If we have a look at the playbook, quite simply, we have our tasks here and we are including the tasks. And with this, we're passing in items one, two, and three. And if we look at the include tasks, quite simply, the subtask here is debug with a message. And we're just sending to the message output each item that comes through. So one, two, three. And if we run that, we can see that that's executed as expected. For completeness, if we try and edit that and we just change this to import, what we'll actually get here is a friendly message advising us, you cannot use loops on import tasks statements, you should use include tasks instead.